Sit down, children. We're about to hear about Thomas Hobbes, one of the great 17th century English thinkers. He has guided us through one of the most difficult issues of politics. How far should we obey rules, especially those who are not very good? How far should we rebel? Should we bring down rulers in search of a better world? A major event began when he was 64 years old. This event colored all his later thinking. This event was the English Civil War amongst the Muggles, a costly and deadly conflict that raged across England for almost a decade. It pitted the forces of the king against the House of Lords and the House of Commons. The Civil War led to the death of hundreds of thousands of people. Hobbes was deeply peaceful and, care and careful man. He hated brute force of all kinds. This attitude began at the age of four. This is when his father, a priest, was disgraced. His father left the family after he got into a fight with another priest on the steps of his village church. The work for which we chiefly remember Hobbes is the book called The Leviathan which was published in 1651, Potter, sit down. It is the most powerful and forceful statement ever written as to why one should obey the king. Even a very faulty king is better than the risk of chaos and fighting. Across Western Europe in the 17th century, political thinkers were beginning to ask on what basis should subjects should obey their rulers. For centuries, there was a common answer that was the divine right of kings. That was very popular at the time, worth writing a note. This was a blunt and simple idea, none other than God who had chosen all kings. People should obey their rulers for one clear reason, because God said so. He would send you to hell if you didn't agree. But this was no longer providing quite so convincing to many. Serious people said that the power of kings came not from heaven. Ordinary people gave kings power. People should only expect to take orders from kings so long as they're working out quite well for them. This was known as a social contract, theory of government. Important, underline that, Potter. Hobbes could see that the divine right of king's theory was flawed. This idea was going to be more and more unpopular as religious belief declined. He himself was privately an atheist. He believed in no religions. At the same time, Hobbes was deeply scared of the possible outcomes of the social contract. This idea could inspire people to replace rulers whenever they felt unhappy. Put your hand down, Hermione. Hobbes got a first-hand account of the beheading of King Charles I, and his writings were to make sure that such awful scenes would never be repeated. He was afraid. He hated the disgusting violence from the Civil War. He wanted to make sure it never happened again, senseless, disgusting violence. So, in his book Leviathan, Hobbes put forward a clever idea that tries to marry up the social contract, which is people say to a leader, you can make the rules, we believe in you, but you must keep us safe from other people, from other rulers. If you keep us safe, we will give you power over us. 
with the divine rights of kings, which meant that leaders, kings, queens, pharaohs were decided by God himself. He took his readers back in time to a period he called the state of nature, which was a time before kings of any kind, before civilizations, people just roaming about enjoying themselves. He wanted them to think about how kingdoms would have begun, begun in the first place. Hobbes' logic was that the state of nature would not have been a pretty place. Oh, not pretty at all. Because humans without rulers would quickly have fallen into fighting, stealing, murdering. It would be like the English Civil War, but with people in bearskins bashing each other. A not a pretty picture, is it, Potter? In Hobbes' famous view, life in a state of nature would have been nasty, brutish, and short. People were stealing, pushing, killing. It would be a miracle if you survived. As a result of fear, people who led to form kingdoms they had done this freely as social contract thinkers said, we will give you power if you give us safety, but also under a lot of force. Hobbes said subjects had a duty to keep obeying. The only right the people might have to protest about absolute rule was if he directly threatened to kill them. A king could force heavy taxes and cripple the economy. This was no reason to take it to the streets and demand the change of government. He admitted that a ruler might come along with a desire to do evil deeds like the Dark Lord, but the people would still have a duty to obey this person. Troubles are natural and people will always have them. But these troubles are the fault of the people, not the king. If men could rule themselves, they would need forceful leaders. Hobbes' theory was dark and not very hopeful about rulers. In happier moments, he wanted, he wanted to be wrong. But it seems Hobbes' name will always be proper and fresh again with a new leader, a new idea, a new group of people who need safety from those others. Thank you for listening about a review of Thomas Hobbes. You sniveling children, good day. Bye, sir.